position. He's had eight race victories, and Delatraz, with two wins out of two races this weekend, is aiming for the treble. So can he secure the race honours? He's starting in the best possible position. He lines up at the front of the grid, and there's no pressure this time around on the shoulders of Louis Delatraz. With him at the front of the grid is Jahan de Ruvela, who's involved in his own battle, and that is to try and come out on top of the rookie competition. He's battling there with Max de Forni, and although de Forni has had a better weekend, and in fact, in terms of points, he's looking stronger, de Ruvela has the better grid position going into this race. The cars will shortly be released, ready for this 25-minute race. Things just slightly running later at Hockenheim after uh, a red flag in the earlier Formula 4 race, but Formula Renault drivers are good to go. The road that they had to race on this morning was wet, although it has been declared a wet track, and there's still a bit of a damp patch in places. Uh, the road pretty much dry now, so they're on slick tyres, of course, and they will be released onto the uh, formation lap very shortly. As far as race wins are concerned, eight have gone the way of Delatraz, two to Kevin Jurg, two to Ukio Sasahara, two to Max de Forni, and one to Dries Vantour. We've had uh, the majority of race weekends being double headers this year. Red Bull Ring was a triple header and two wins to Kevin Jurg and one to Delatraz. So can Delatraz do three in a weekend? It will be very, very impressive if he could. There he is on pole position, Louis Delatraz, who of course is supported this weekend by his dad, Jean Denis, former Grand Prix racer, but more successful in sports car racing. And the Delatraz family with links to BMW. So uh, Louis, earlier on in the day, was to be found on the grid for the GT finale in BMW jacket. And maybe in the future, a GT BMW career uh, beckons for him. There is Jahan de Ruvela, the Force India junior driver, a third and a retirement, his results out of the two races held thus far this weekend. But de Ruvela coming into this, needing to try and outscore Max de Forni. De Forni has 201 points, de Ruvela has 184 and a half so it's going to be another of those situations to keep an eye to over the course of the race the top 20 drivers score points there is Kevin Jurg he's had a fourth and a second coming into this race so what can Jurg do here to try and influence things well he is fighting with Ukio Sasahara to be second in the championship there are five points between them Jurg has 281 and Ukio Sasahara there double winner this year has Two eight, uh, sorry, two seven six. So you've got those five points between the pair, and as I say, the other battle is on between Max de Forni, starting on two oh one, and his opposition for the rookie title, Jahan de Ruvela, on one eight four and a half half points scored at Spa when the weather conditions were so bad that although the race started behind a safety car, it never got going. The weather just did not improve sufficiently. There is Dries Vantor further back on the grid. Vantor will line up fifth, ninth after a penalty in race one, third in the second. Okio Sasahara that we looked at a moment ago has a second and a fourth to his name. And the young Belgian driver, Dries Vantor for Jezef Kaufman Racing, the champion team this year, ahead there of fellow Belgian Max de Forni, who drives for the ART junior team. The same ART that runs in the DTM that used to run in Blancpain Endurance has been so successful in GP2 over the years, for example. Frederic Vasseur's team. And there is Max de Forni, son of Didier, former GT winner himself, and also, of course, promoter of the Belgian Grand Prix. So Max de Forni, a double winner this season. Good to go. Seventh and ninth, his race results. There is the ART car of Darius Osqui. Eighth in race one, retired from race two with a mechanical drama. And then eighth on the grid will be Josef Zaruba, who's had a tenth and a sixth to his credit this weekend. So the cars will get this final warming up lap and then released, ready for business. There is Louis Delatraz. Doesn't matter what happens in this race, he's proved the point this year. He is very much a champion in Formula Renault and he's also done outstanding work in the Euro Cup as well. But Louis Delatraz would ideally love to round out the year with another victory. You've got Jörg versus Sasahara for second. And, of course, it is Jörg who needs to stay ahead of Sasahara there. And then in the rookie competition, De Ruvela versus De Forni. So the cars will be released any moment. Just making sure that nobody has got any dramas. No, they haven't. So the green flag is now waved and the cars accelerate away. You get 30 points for a win in this, and then it's 20, sorry, 24, 20, 17, and then it's reduced by one point uh, for 
fifth place onwards. You can see where the road has never properly dried. Actually, the sky is about as bright now as it has been all day. This is about the only time we've had any break in the sky that's been so, so grey. Lots of heavy rain this morning and incidents are plenty coming in the earlier race for the Formula Renault two-litre Northern European Cup. This is the grid based on a driver's second best lap time out of the first qualifying session. And the field then working its way through the fast parabolica in bone dry conditions. That gets you to 230 237 kilometres an hour in seventh gear, hard on the brakes to first gear for the hairpin. This is how the order is. Louis Delatraz ahead of Jahan Ruvala. Then it's Jörg Sassahara and Vantor ahead of Deforni in the top six. Osqui is seventh. Zaruba will line up eighth on the grid ahead of Mazepin and Chavez. Then newcomer Denis Bulatov and Colin Noble ahead of Alex Gill, Stefan Rina, Pontus Fredriksson and Bartolomé Miretsky. 17th, Bruno Baptista ahead of David Drew. David Richard is 19th, 20th, Harry Salmanen. And 21st is Mikko Pertala. And Pertala has been a driver with a 19th and a 16th to his name. Doesn't do that much racing, but uh, Pertala is an engineer for the Positi One Motorsport team, which is run by the man ahead of him on the grid, Harry Salmanen. And so when they're not too busy, the pair of them dust down a couple of cars and go racing. Uh, they're not setting the world on fire, but they're enjoying themselves. And the Positi One team, good to have in the championship. That's the Polish driver in the green and black car. You've got a glimpse of Bartolomé Mielecki, who has come via the Kia Picanto Championship in Poland. He's a double champion of that. And the circuit looking a bit grubby in the stadium after lots of F4 cars ran wide and ploughed up the turf in the earlier race. So, the last round of Formula Renault 2-litre NEC for 2015. Championship already decided, but we have second place and the rookie competition still to address. Through they come, down towards the completion of the formation lap. And then they will slot into place, ready for 25 minutes of racing. It is time rather than laps. And are we going to get through this without any incident? Let's see. So Louis Delatraz slots into place. Pole position on the one-by-one -one stagger grid is on the racing line, so it's on the outside for the run down to turn one. With him at the front will be Jahan de Ruvala. Then you have also lining up into position Kevin Jörg, who is third on the grid, fourth on the grid, Okia Sasahara. And as soon as the last car is in place, that of Mika Pertela, then we will be good to go. The green flag will be shown at the back of the grid to say that everybody is where they need to be. And then the officials will quickly show a five second board. That is displayed now, just hidden behind the gantry as you look at it. The lights in a moment will go red, and when the lights go out now, it's racing, and Daruvala was definitely creeping at the start. Then he stopped and bogged down. There's another car slow away, and I fear it was Kevin Jörg that was slow out of the blocks, but we'll check as the cars work their way round turn one for the first time. But Daruvala definitely was creeping. And so, it was the outside of his blocks. Yes, he was. There may well be a penalty coming for Daruvala as the cars work their way up then towards turn one. It was Darius Osqui, apologies, who was the other one slow away. Jörg is safe as a spin, which looks like it's possibly Bruno Baptista for Koiranen. And off in avoidance has gone David Drew, the Mark Burdett Motorsport driver, trying to take evasive action. They're on the escape road at the exit of turn two. There is Baptista getting going again. David Drew hopefully can carry on also. So the leader is Delatraz as they head down now into the Spitzkera. And Daruvla challenging up on the inside of Dries Van Tour, who has to back out of that to avoid contact. And there was still a bit of a whack between them as they went through the turn out of that right-hand hairpin. Where is Daruvla in relation to Max de Forni? He is ahead. He's got two cars between him and his opposition for the rookie crown as well. But Daruvala, I anticipate, will be under investigation. And Van Tour goes up the inside and makes contact with Daruvala, who gets airborne. And Daruvala continues in the race, but the car may well have damage. And that was one Belgian driver getting into Daruvala and helping another Belgian driver. They're in different teams, but very definitely there. The rookie battle, because Van Tour's in that as well, has just swung back in favour of Max de Forni. Daruvala rather rudely nerfed out of the way there. And how much damage has that done to the car? Because he was up on two wheels, it would have crash landed. And Jahan Daruvala then continues, but he's losing places. He's fallen back behind Max de Forni, and Daruvala is very much on the attack. 
Big, big spin there coming out of the third cover and contact at the end of the lap. Two cars off, and that's going to be a safety car period to try to retrieve the incidents. So we have lost coming out of the corner. Josef Zaruba was certainly one, and I fear, was it Alex Gill who was the other for Fortec? Gill was the spinner and got collected by Josef Zaruba. So that brings out a safety car. And it's rare that we have incidents at that last corner, but we've had one in this race. And there, with broken suspension, Alex Gill, Zaruba off into the barriers on the outside. So the safety car is called for to get those two cars out of harm's way. Look at it again. Gill runs wide, finds the wet part of the road, keeps his foot in, but spins. And Zaruba thought he'd done the right thing by going to the outside, but he gets collected. And off he goes. So two impacts. One breaks the suspension. And then the second impact, as he hits the barrier, breaks the front. So the safety car is deployed. There is Josef Zaruba's car that needs retrieving. And as soon as that is out of harm's way, and Alex Gill's car likewise, then we should be good for a restart. But frustration once more for the officials that drivers get themselves into strife. There it is from another angle. Gill wide over the curb, loses traction, spins. Zaruba has to go the long way around the outside and just gets collected. There's nothing he could do about it. Marshals scatter out of the way as Zaruba ends up in the barriers. There's an incident between number 35, which is Bruno Baptista and David Drew under investigation. Whether the Vantor and Daruvula incident and Daruvula start are investigated, we'll wait and see. So the field behind the safety car, or will be, because that will collect them this time. The field coming over the line. We're under safety car conditions, and the safety car will collect everybody uh, at the exit of turn one. It is deployed from turn one. So the safety car will collect them this lap around. That replay of the start doesn't quite show Daruvla having crept, but he certainly moved forward. And that's another one, no doubt, that will be investigated. We might get another look in a moment. Uh, again, you see that's just as the lights go out, but Daruvla had moved in advance of his line, I would have suggested. So the timing system would have triggered that and the information should be there for the officials to act upon if required. And then this was turn two and it was in the mid pack where Bruno Baptista made a move up on the inside and collected other way around. David Drew it was who made the move on the inside of Bruno Baptista and collected him. So that's one incident being investigated and now we do have confirmation that Daruvula is under investigation for a jump start so that is now also being reflected on the timing screen message line you just got the replay from another angle of Baptista and Drew now what about this Vantor for the inside door closes he probably committed to it but it was certainly a fairly forceful effort and that is not as yet being investigated. It might be because there aren't enough lines on the timing screen to tell the teams about it, but it could also be that that is deemed to be a racing incident. And then there was this, Alex Gill losing it, and Josef Zaruba thinks, which way do I go? And he chooses the wrong way. Off he goes into the wall, and the pair of them out of the race, two more damaged cars. How are we doing in terms of the clear-up operation? It's all happening down at the last corner, and the cleanup is still happening I'm afraid so you've got two cars to retrieve and a bit of damaged barrier to sort out of course where the tires would have taken a bit of a whack so there is Zaruba's car being hooked out of the way and the safety car brings them through so that's live as you see Gill's car moved and all of this eating into the 25 minutes over the timing line they come and Louis Delatraz, just to recap, is the race leader. Kevin Jörg second, Okio Sasahara third. So that's good for Jörg for second in the championship. Then fourth is Enrique Chavez, fifth is Max de Forni, sixth is Van Tour, seventh is Daruvela. That's enough to give Max de Forni the rookie element of the championship. Ninth is Colin Noble, tenth, Bartolomé Miretsky. And then in 11th place, Stefan Rina, 12th, Denis Bulatov. He could be one to watch, Bulatov. Two fifth places have gone his way this weekend. But for the moment, he is 
mired down in the traffic. Uh, although Bruno Baptista got going incidentally after that incident up at turn two, David Drew did not. So Zaruba, Gill and Drew are the ones that have gone missing. And we're on to lap number four with 18 minutes still to go. And the cars turn their way into the Spitzkera hairpin behind the safety car. And drivers involved in incidents then will head to the medical centre just to make sure that they are all OK. The officials not leaving anything to chance where there's uh, pretty hard contact. And there in the other medical car, drivers being brought back from the final corner. So in a few moments, the track should be clear. Are we going to be able to get the race back underway this time? The medical car there turns off the pit straight. Yes, safety car will be in this lap. So the lights go out, safety car in this time. And Louis Delatraz then slows his pace, bunches up everybody behind him. And what he's going to try to do is outfox them all and start to accelerate. And when he does, he's got to keep on going. He can't go and slow because that just creates that dangerous concertina effect behind used to be the case that people would try and accelerate and then break and as their opponent break they get back onto the throttle and try and gain an advantage but all that does of course is make more incidents happen in the pack so that outlawed and now you've got the driver Louis Delatraz controlling the pace and he's already broken away from his teammate Kevin Yerg second, Ducky Sahara third and then Enrique Chavez in fourth as they try and keep off the painted curb but Chavez runs up wide, doesn't come a cropper as a result but does lose a little bit of ground to Ducky Sahara. Josef Kaufman one and two as they head over the timing line in third place then it is Sahara for ART Grand Prix in fourth place Enrique Chavez fifth on the restart Max De Forni, sixth is the yellow car of Dries Vantor and a challenge is made there Darius Osqui up on the inside and Osqui goes ahead of Harry Salmon and there's a lockup by Sasahara going into turn two. 16 minutes of the race still to run as the cars turn their way through the Parabolica once again and then up towards the Spitzkera. There is a drive-through penalty being given to Jahan de Ruvela for a jump start. It was in the post, wasn't it? So Jahan de Ruvela gets a drive-through for jumping the start and the race leaders break for the Spitzkera with Louis Delatraz looking as though three in a weekend is going to be his way. It's been a tremendous effort all season by Delatraz. Yes, he's been racing these cars for a couple of years, so he does have lots of experience, but he's made very, very few mistakes and has been quick all season, both in this and in the Euro Cup. So Louis Delatraz leads the way, looking as though three wins is there for the taking as he heads into turn seven. Jahan de Ruvela then gets this drive-through penalty. The information will be communicated to him by the boards and also hopefully by the team. But the result of that is to take him out of the mix as far as the rookie competition is concerned. Irrespective of whether uh, Dries Vantor made contact with him or not, the penalty was always going to go his way, wasn't it, after the jump start? So he was always going to have to drop out of the equation and serve the drive-through. The fact that he lost another place to Vantor is almost immaterial. Through the stadium they come. This, lap number five, and when will... Daruvala get the message, and when will he serve it? It's going to be right now. He slows coming through the Sudkurva, dives for the pit lane, and so down the pit lane comes the Indian driver, part of the Force India junior driver program. So many F1 teams these days with a junior affiliation, and Jahan Daruvala, who has been learning about a new car and new circuits all year, driving for the British Fortec team, has done a very good job. He serves the drive through penalty. There's one out wide there at turn one as the field battles up towards the next right hander. Miretsky tries to defend his place, and he does so. So up front, Louis Delatraz it is, leading the way, trying to build a gap over the rest of them as the cars now work their way through the Parabolica to the eye. The lead gap is down a little bit. It was just under a second at the start of this lap as Kevin Yerg was in hot pursuit of Louis Delatraz. They work their way now up through the Spitzkera. And there is Bartolomé Miretsky coming under attack once again. Denis Bulatov is the man who's trying to find a way past him. Bulatov has been good all weekend, and there's a challenge lower down as well because there... We have Bruno Baptista getting up on the inside of Harry Salminen and he then defends on the run down towards turn seven. Pretty aggressively, in fact. Squeezes Harry Salminen in the Pazitti 1 motorsport car. Bulatov again tries to find a way around on the outside of Miretsky, but to no avail. So now as they head down towards the stadium, there is Dries Vantor who loses out because he goes off the road. He'd lost a place anyway. But then Vantor at the escape road misses out the whole of the stadium. And now what does he do? He's going to have to either sit and wait or rejoin and then give away places. 
The danger is by being on the outside that somebody runs wide and collects you. Vantor gets back onto the road. He should have been in sixth place behind Max de Forney. And there he is, and he picks up his place and his pace, but then loses out as past him, coming over the line, goes Enrique Chavez. So Chavez moves through, picks up the spot, and Vantor, having made a real mess of it, up the escape road. In other categories, we've had people going up the escape road and panicking and ending up in the barriers, but Vantor used the escape road as it should be to keep in the race. Now he's got Nikita Mazepin running round the outside of him. This now is for sixth place. Mazepin goes through, so although Vantor gave back the places he'd gained. He's lost more because he's not really been up to proper racing speed. Now he does fight back and go ahead of Mazepin through the Parabolica, heading up towards the Spitzkera this time. Lap number seven, 12 minutes and change on the clock. And Dries van Tour goes back ahead now, back up into sixth position and a big lockout by Mazepin who goes straight on. Has he got a flat? The car looked like it was sitting down strangely there. And Miretsky has run wide as well. Whoa, way up over the curb there goes Nikita Mazepin. If he hadn't got damage before, it should have now. And now he's got to defend from Colin Noble, who comes up round the outside and gains the place. And Mazepin is losing out again because Darius Osquies up the inside. There's something definitely not right with Mazepin's car. I think it's a slow puncture that caused him to run wide at the Spitzkera. And it's happened again there. Look, I know he's now bounced over the curb and suffered some damage. But the way here, when he hit the brakes, yeah, I think that's a, a, a front right. It's got a slow puncture because it's barely turning. It's barely touching the ground and the car slithers up the road. You can see it bouncing as though all the wheels aren't in full contact with the road. He's able to get out of that mess. But there's something clearly not right. And then it goes wrong again at the Spitzkera. That doesn't help the situation, I'll grant you. And again, just look how soft that front right tyre is as he bounces. You can see it in slow motion. It looks soft from what glimpse you get there, but have a look as the car bounces, just how much absorption there is in that front right. You can't really see it on that angle, but he bounces his way back onto the road. And so Mazepin, in fact, now is in the pit lane, but I think it was a slow puncture that was the cause of all of that. Now, had he made contact with Vantor or had he run over something? Either way, Mazepin is in the pit lane and I fear he's out of the car looking into the distance. Not quite out of the car, no, but the team having a look. Yes, it is a new front right going on. So they're going to send him back into the race. Nikita Mazepin, who is another driver for the Josef Kaufmann team. And in a few moments, the car is going to be released, but they need to make sure that the wheel nuts are tightened up. They need to keep him on the lead lap if they can. So the 16-year-old Russian blasts down the pit lane. Russian back into the race at just over 10 minutes to go now as the leader, Louis Delatraz, lest we forget him, leading by over a second, getting away, therefore, from Kevin Jurg. He's also done the fastest lap of the race, so the day just gets better and better and better for Delatraz. He's won a championship, he's won two races this weekend, and a third victory beckons. Colin Gill there coming under attack. 45 is... Sorry, Colin Noble, I should say. Colin Noble coming under attack in 45 because he's got uh, Darius Osqui hunting him down. And Pe uh, Pontus Fredriksson is also in that mix as well. Over the timing line, Louis Delatraz now leading by an increased margin. 11 tenths of a second it is. Noble versus Fredriksson is the next battle to keep an eye to. Osqui having got up and passed them. Therese Vantor goes over the timing line. He's running in sixth spot and falling away by the look of it now because Enrique Chavez is just pulling away slightly further up the road. Delatraz continues to have the best lap of the race to his credit. As I say, the lead gap has extended and Darius Osqui into the top 10, trying to work his way up into contention now. Bruno Baptista, who was knocked into a spin early on, also working his way back into the mix now, starting to close on the traffic up the road ahead of him as the cars now power on towards the Spitzkera. Bruno Baptista looking to gain a place if he can from Pontus Fredriksson who wants to get past Colin Noble, former radical racer Colin Noble, then raced in the uh, BARC Formula Renault Championship, another now defunct UK single-seater series, but has come to the NEC this year and gone strongly. So for the moment, Noble in 11, Fredriksson behind him. He got turfed out of race one and had broken suspension, Pontus Fredriksson, yesterday afternoon. And look how the conditions are improving all the time. The sun is out, finally, at 25 past five local time. Best weather of the day. The leader through, Delatraz, dominating the race. Uh, but up front, the opposition left a trail in his wake.
There are some good battles lower down, and this is definitely one of them. As Colin Noble is in 11th spot, fending off Pontus Fredriksson further up the road. Miretsky, number 96, has got Osprey bearing down on him. Darius Osprey for ART Junior team charges on. So the two race leaders have just started lap number 10, namely Louis Delatraz and his fellow Swiss teammate at Josef Kaufmann Racing, Kevin Jörg, in third spot. It is Okio Sasahara, and that means that Jörg will be good for second in the championship. Sasahara, who won the opening race at Monza, had another win at the Nürburgring, just not able to take the battle to him today. And then in fourth place is Max de Forni. Now, where is Deruvela after the drive through Well, he's just gained a place, in fact. Jahan Deruvela is in 14th, but that takes him out of the mix as far as the rookie crown is concerned. Challenge made there. Look, under breaking up at... Turn two, Baptista ahead of Fredrickson. So Bruno Baptista working his way up the order. The South American driver, Bruno Baptista, the Brazilian, driving for the Coiran uh, and team, the Finnish team. But Baptista, after a spell in the South American single seater scene, came to Formula Renault Alps and moved to the NEC Championship midway through this year. And Baptista defending because Pontus Fredrickson has not given up as they dive down to Spitzkera, tries to get the wide line in and the tighter line out. And so Fredrickson in the Prisma Motorsport car is right under the rear wing of Baptista. Fredrickson fourth in the Nordic Formula Renault 1.6 Championship last year. But he can't find a way through. Gets a toe, gets the outside line. Can he get the cut through? Can he get the inside line? No. Door closed. So there's no opportunity there. The line claimed and defended by Bruno Baptista, who continues then to hang on to the advantage. Down they come into the stadium once more. This battle now is for 12th place, with Baptista having gained the spot on this lap. Running out wide there is Jahan Daruvala behind them, so Daruvala still pushing on, trying to get himself as high up the order as he can, but with all due deference to him, it's a rather forlorn hope now because the rookie quest is gone, unless big drama befalls Max de Forni. And you don't get separate points in this championship for the rookie class. You take the points for where you finish overall. So uh, even if de Forni were to drop out, the fact that Daruvala is so far down is still a mark in the negative column for him. The race leaders currently on lap number 11. We've got six minutes on the clock. And there, Bartolome Miretsky is busy fending off Darius Osqui for 10th spot as the cars work their way through the Parabolica once again. As they do so now, there's the run up towards the Spitzkera. And Osqui is possibly close enough to think about diving out and making a move. They get to the braking zone. He does dive out. And there is Vantor going up the inside of Enrique Chavez, but he runs out wide. So. One up and one down for Dries Vantor. That was for fifth place. And so Chavez let him carry all the speed through and just ducked back up the inside and took the place away again. What about Miretsky versus Osqui? Osqui is through in the background by the look of it. He has gone by, so up into ninth place now. Darius Osqui, as the cars turn their way into the Mercedes arena and the race leaders are into the stadium once again. Louis Delatraz continues to lead the way convincingly. What's going on further back in the pack as the rest of the drivers work their way to the Saxe Curva. There is Vantour in the yellow car. Dries Vantour on the back of Enrique Chavez. And Stefan Rina is behind them. He's also coming into the mix now in seventh place, Stefan Rina, having started a bit further back on the grid for this race. He started indeed 14th, so Stefan Rina has made some good progress up into seventh spot. The leaders go through into the last five minutes. The lead gap continues to extend just slightly, but extend it does. It's up to 1.2 seconds now between the leader, Louis Delatraz, and Kevin Jörg in second spot. Okio Sasahara third, dropping away from Jörg. In fact, last time, Kevin lapped fractionally quicker than did Louis Delatraz. But I still think that Delatraz has got this all under control, doing just enough to make sure he comes out on top. There is Stefan Rina, number 36, in the Fortec Motorsports car, the British team running the Austrian driver who raced in Formula Renault Alps, raced before that in the Formula ADAC Master Championship, replaced now by Formula 4 in Germany. And Rina new to the NEC as again Vantor makes his move up the inside and again outbreaks himself. And this time is in danger of losing another place because Stefan Rina is right there behind him. So for the second lap in a row, Dries Vantor tries and fails to get past Enrique Chavez. But now, because of the pace of Stefan Rina, absolutely charging on, having joined the championship late this year, he's bringing the gap down and down and down. It won't be long before he's a real factor. And that is Max de Forni getting it locked up into the Spitzkera, the rookie 
championship leader running in the race in fourth overall. He's had two outright wins this year as well, Defoe, and he's been impressive in his uh, first season of car racing at this level. And so Max Defoe turns his way into the stadium, still pushing as hard as he can. Three more minutes are on the clock. Louis Delatraz is the race leader. He has an advantage that's gone up again now of 2.4 seconds over Kevin Yerg. Behind him in third place is Sasahara, and fourth is Dufourne in fifth spot. Van Tour, sorry, in sixth spot, I should say, is Van Tour ahead of Stefan Rina, and the gap between them is now 0.6 of a second. Now, there's a bit of a tar smoking lock up there, further up the road from Max Dufourne. This is the fight for fifth and sixth and seventh now. Chavez, Van Tour, and Rina in eighth place behind them in the Dayglow car from AVF is uh, Denis Bulatov, trying to get into the mix as well. Former kart racer Denis Bulatov, who's joined the championship this weekend for the first time. And he's doing his level best to stay on the back of this group and indeed gain places. Race leaders currently work lap 13. Is there going to be time for one or for two more laps at the end of this? The field quite strung out, even though we had that safety car period and the field through the Spitzkehrer. A flying lap is a minute and 40 seconds. I think Delatraz, who's coming up, do you believe, to the last corner on the lap, as you look at the fifth-place drivers coming now into the Mercedes arena, such is the monster gap that Delatraz has over the opposition, uh, then it's going to be, I think, one more lap. Let's see. There is contact as Deruvela gets up the inside of Bruno Baptista, heading through the Spitzkehrer. And so the race leader, Louis Delatraz, heads there towards the timing line. Will go through with a minute and 36 on the clock. This will be the last lap of the race for him. Final lap confirmed. Louis Delatraz onto the final lap of the weekend of the season in Formula Renault 2 litre. NEC and he's going to win three races in the weekend as well as winning the championship and this perhaps the easiest of them no pressure whatsoever he's just been able to drive the car doesn't have to think about points he's also been able to gap the opposition and Louis Delatraz who's certainly come on a pace as a driver moved through the Formula BMW Talent Cup which was the driver training and then one public race meeting competition that replaced Formula BMW as a effectively it had become Europe wide category and then Delatraz stepped into Formula Renault. Took him a little bit of time to get used to the two-litre car, but this year he's had his season of seasons and leads Kevin Jurg, who last year looked the more impressive. Down they come into the Mercedes arena for the last time. There are BMW connections between Delatraz and the manufacturer, so where does he go next? Is there going to be a BMW involvement? Could he, for example, be placed in a GT programme, or will he carry on in single-seater racing? Jean-Denis Delatraz, his father, will have a huge part to play in that, I'm sure. But for now, the Josef Kaufmann racing driver heads into the stadium for the last time. We're not done yet because there, look, there's a change as Vantour drops back behind Bulatov. So the battle continues and Vantour is losing places on this last lap because two cars have got up and passed him. Rina is through, Bulatov is through. Has Vantour had a moment somewhere, maybe up at the Spitzkehrer and lost more places? We might get a replay to confirm as here comes Louis Delatraz to score a ninth win of a championship winning season. Louis Delatraz dominates Formula Renault two litre NEC at Hockenheim this weekend. Kevin Jurg, his teammate, comes home for second position. Okio Sasahara third and that confirms Jurg as the runner up in the championship. Max Dufourne fourth to win the rookie championship. Fifth, Enrique Chavez. And then sixth, it is Stefan Rina. Seventh is Bulatov. And eighth drops Dries Van Tor. And very nearly, he dropped to ninth because he had Darius Oskwi right on his tail at the end. Tenth, Bartolomé Mieretsky. So, another great season. The Formula Renault racing comes to a close. And for Louis Delatraz, it just could not be better because having won the championship to take three race wins in a weekend is massively impressive. And no mistakes evident. He just got on with a job in hand, drove clear of the opposition. And so the win goes the way of Delatraz. Jahan Daruvala in the end, incidentally, 11th after the drive-through penalty that he had. So a frustrating race to Ruvla, second on the grid, 11th. Not a bad recovery, in fairness, after the drive-through penalty. But Louis Delatraz has no concerns. He is a very happy race winner and will make his way round to the podium, a place that he has been very regularly this year.
confirmation of the race results. Delatraz from Jurg from Sasahara. Max Forney taking fourth ahead of Enrique Chavez. Then in sixth, Stefan Rina seventh. Denis Bulatov in eighth place. It was Dries Van Tor, ninth, Darius Osqui, and tenth, Bartolomé Mieretsky. Eleventh, Jahan Daruvala and Colin Noble took 12th ahead of Bruno Baptista. 14th was Pontus Fredriksson. Harry Salminen was 15th ahead of David Richard. And then uh, Mikko Pertela with Nikita Mazepin after his pit stop for a new tyre coming home in 18th spot. 2.9 seconds, the margin as you see on the caption. Delatraz to Jurg. And another great display of how to race and how to win in a Formula Renault courtesy of Louis Delatraz. And so the drivers then will complete the in-lap, make their way now to Parc Ferme, and then swiftly they will be rushed up to the podium. It has been a very, very good season of racing again in Formula Renault 2-litre NEC. More to come next year, which we will look forward to. But for now, there's a big celebration tonight, the end-of-year championship party, and the man who is going to have a lot of silverware to carry home is right there. Louis Delatraz, in a moment, will step from the car. And a ninth win of the year for Louis Delatraz confirms that he is a very deserved champion. He steps from the car to go and embrace his father, and then Papa Kaufman, Joseph Kaufman Sr. Everybody keen to congratulate the champion. And, of course, that was merely a race win. But what it does also do, of course, is extend the winning margin that he has in the title race come the end of the year over everybody else left a trail in his wake. It's going to be fascinating to see where Delatraz goes for next season. And you put him against different people in different cars. Will it be FIA Formula 3, for example? And how would he get on in that environment where it is another ultra-competitive championship? But for now, there is the top step of the podium for the unassuming Swiss driver, and in the background, you hear the dulcet tones of Curra of Laming, who is the media officer for the championship, who in a moment will escort the top three and also the winning rookie, Max Dufourny, up to the podium. Third place, Ukiyo Sasahara, a double race winner this year, but this weekend when he needed to be outscoring Kevin Jurg, he couldn't do it often enough. So he finishes the year third in the championship, Second in the championship and second in the race, Kevin Jurg. But the dominant season of Louis Delatraz and Josef Kaufmann Racing is concluded with a ninth win of the season. And the top three in the race, the top three in the championship, the fourth driver that will make his way to the podium is Max Dufourny, and he is the winning rookie. It's been a very lively season. Some great action we have had all year. And Louis Delatraz confirms that he is the man of the moment in Formula Renault with another victory. He steps from the car and in a few moments will make his way to the podium. As the drivers head in that direction, let's have a quick look back at some of the highlights of the final round of Formula Renault 2 litre NEC of 2015. It has been a frantic season of Formula Renault 2-litre Northern European Cup. A champion crowned in Louis Delatraz with another race win. Three in a weekend. The perfect way to end the season for the new champion. 
Expect more great action in 2016 for now. Thanks for your company this season. From David Addison at Hockenheim, it's goodbye. Thank you.